This is the fourth of the um, market failure series. Um, in this video, we will cover positive externalities of production and consumption. So I'm going to define and explain the concept of positive externalities in production and consumption. And I'm going to um, define and explain the concept of merit goods. And I will use diagrams to um, show positive externalities of production and consumption as well as government ways to correct this as a um, form or type of market failure. So let's start with um, positive externalities of production. Uh, positive externalities of production occur when basically the production of a good or service creates external benefits that are good for third parties. Say for example there's a firm that happens to provide high quality training to its workers. This training will benefit other firms because if any of those highly trained workers leave at some point, they will go and benefit other firms who, who may not be able to pay for such a high quality training. So um, by investing in its workers, um, th by this firm investing in its workers, society as a whole gains from that training. In this situation, the marginal social costs are lower than the marginal private costs because the training costs the firm um, money, but the costs for society are lower because there's an external benefit. Now, in such a situation, because the marginal private cost is so high, there's an under-provision of um, the good. A lot of firms will not invest that much money in high-quality training. Therefore, there's an under-allocation of resources. As you can see here in the diagram, um, because the marginal um, private cost is higher than the marginal social cost, which is a supply curve, there is usually an under-allocation. So the, the ideal or the optimum allocation should happen at the intersection of the marginal social cost and marginal social benefit at Q star and P star. But the problem is because the marginal private cost is so high, um, what happens is this is the equilibrium in the market. Uh, the difference, the vertical difference between the marginal private cost and the marginal social cost, this vertical difference here, that's the um, positive externality that um, society is missing out on and this triangle here shaded in yellow that's the potential welfare that society could gain but society is not gaining because of the um, because of the marginal private cost being higher than the marginal social cost so how can the government interfere or intervene in the market to correct this market failure this good or this um good that results in external benefits is under provided. There's an under allocation of resources. So how can the government correct this market failure? Basically, there are two main ways by which the government can rectify this market failure. The first option is to give subsidies. By giving subsidies, this will shift the MPC curve downwards until the marginal private cost actually equals the marginal social cost. However, since we're supposed to evaluate those government policies, it is difficult to estimate how much of a subsidy you should give. So it's difficult to estimate the level of the subsidy. And there is always an opportunity cost when the government provides subsidies because that's taxpayers' money. And this is not to say um, it's a waste of money to provide subsidies for firms to give training, but there are other things that the government has to sort of fund or allocate money to. The second option is the government actually providing vocational training itself and setting up training centers for workers in certain industries. But the problem with this option is that it's quite costly. There's a high cost. Um, also, there is an opportunity cost in this option as well. And this may actually discourage firms from providing training themselves. When they see that the government is providing all this training, they might decide to not provide training themselves and the trainers may lack the industrial experience that is needed. Um, regardless of the costs, though, um, training and retraining workers improves the quality of labor. And in the long run, it can shift the economy's um, production possibilities curve. It causes economic growth. So training and education in general is something that has very high external benefits. And it is worth the um, investment. And it is worth um, government spending being allocated to it as well. Now let's move on to positive externalities of consumption, which is basically um, the case of merit goods. Uh, positive externalities of consumption occur when the consumption of a good or service creates external benefits that are good for third parties. Um, a very good example is healthcare and education. 
by consuming healthcare, you are less likely to have infectious dise- diseases that you might go out there and um, basically spread. Uh, by consuming education, you will at some point be a more productive member of society. So these goods, by consuming them, um, they do bring about external benefits to third parties. In the case of positive externalities of consumption, the marginal social benefits are higher than the marginal private benefits. And in this case, there's an under-consumption of the good. The government actually wants to increase consumption of the good. So if you have a look um, in the diagrammatic representation, the market for healthcare, uh, you've got the supply curve, which is the marginal social cost curve here, and the demand curve, which is the marginal social benefit curve. But because the uh, marginal social benefits are higher than the marginal private benefits, the ideal quantity that should be provided is Q star, which is the intersection of marginal social cost and marginal social benefit at a price of P star. But what's actually being provided is Q1 and P1 um, at this point here. So again, there is a potential welfare gain that could be gained by consuming more. And it is this triangle here, this yellow or orange triangle here. Now, remember the vertical distance between the marginal social benefit curve and the marginal private benefit curve, which is this arrow here, this is the um, positive externality uh, uh, that society is, is missing out on because of this underconsumption of the good. So how can the government rectify this market failure? Well, there are three solutions. The first solution is to subsidize the supply of this married good or service. This will shift the marginal social cost curve downwards and it increases the supply of the good or service. This solution, however, is very costly. And again, whenever you're spending government money, there's a high opportunity cost. The second solution is positive advertising to encourage people to go out there and consume more of that good or service. Instead of shifting the marginal social cost curve, what this does is it shifts the marginal private benefit curve to the right because it increases the demand for the good or service. This is also a very costly solution, but it's only truly beneficial in the long run. You won't really see its benefits in the short run. The third solution that the government can um, take to correct this market failure is to pass laws insisting that citizens have vaccinations or regular health checks or making education compulsory, for example. Um, often this is successful when the good or service is provided free of charge by the government, which again is very costly and has a high opportunity cost. And some people see this as an infringement of their civil liberties. So the government has three solutions. Each solution comes with a price. There are potential advantages and potential drawbacks. Now, the extent of government intervention here will depend on the amount of external benefits. In the case of education and healthcare, these do result in massive external benefits, and no one can argue against that. And they do affect the uh, productivity of labor and economic growth in the long run. So generally, education and healthcare are a government priority. Whether the government will directly provide the good or service or um, will encourage the private sector to provide it, this will differ from one country to another or from, from one government to another. So in diagrammatic form, this is what the two solutions look like. So the first solution, which is the subsidy, um, basically this is the marginal social cost curve, this is the marginal social benefit curve, and this is the marginal private benefit curve. Um, the market without government intervention will be at this point here, providing Q1 at a price of P1. But by providing a subsidy, you shift the supply curve to MSC plus subsidy here. Supply will increase. Um, and the market will reach equilibrium at this point here, what would happen is it would provide Q star and a pretty cheap price here. This is solution number one. Now, solution number two doesn't affect the supply. It actually affects uh, demand. So solution number two, which is positive advertising, won't shift the um, marginal social cost curve. It will actually shift the mi marginal benef private benefit curve until it meets the marginal um, social cost curve um, uh, and it, it's exactly the same as the marginal social benefit curve. So the second solution will, will bring the market at equilibrium here. So again, you do produce Q um, star, but the price will actually rise. 
So um, the first solution is, is this point here. The second solution is that point here. In both cases, the market will gain that positive externality or that um, potential welfare gain. So just to wrap up the topic of positive externalities, positive externalities of production occur uh, when the production of a good or service results in the marginal private cost curve being higher than the marginal social cost. So the marginal private cost is higher than the marginal social cost. In this case, there's an underproduction or an underprovision of the good or service, and the solution is to increase the supply of the good or service. However, in the case of um, positive externalities of consumption, which we refer um, to these as merit goods, the marginal social benefit in that case is higher than the marginal private benefit. And the problem here is that there's an underconsumption of the good or service. And the solution is either to increase supply of the good or service through subsidizing or to increase demand for the good or service through positive advertising.